Hey everyone and welcome to Almost Cancelled, I am Peter, that is Connor, and we are going to talk about the Umbrella Academy Season 2, Episode 10, it is called The End of Something, it is the season finale, which is interesting, uh, there's so much weird baggage coming out of this final episode, just at, at least from our perspective of how we've talked about it, what we've liked, what we've not liked this season, mm. and bizarrely, I do actually think this episode is quite good, despite all the reasons why it shouldn't work i think it's it's a mixed bag for me in that there's a lot of things i objectively like and can see why people like it uh -huh. but also there's so much where i'm like this would be landing so much better in the correct context with oh, the sure. right build up i there's some emotional moments in this final episode that i think work surprisingly really well despite the fact that i don't think the ep the season built to them in the way that it should have or, or more, more importantly just the plots that were used to try and build to them weren't engaging and i don't think very interesting or entertaining uh there's definitely some that still don't for example the the heartful or the heartfelt good but goodbye between uh sissy and and vanya I, I felt nothing for that but the whole family deciding to like come with vanya after seemingly saying no in the first place to deal with her problem because she needed her family it's such a, a nice contrast to kind of what caused a lot of the problems in season one is them not yeah. being there for her. They're actually, it's almost... They, it's, they've actually learned something. This is almost a weird thing to say, but it's almost like stolen valor from season one in the sense that them all getting in the car to go and help her, I think it has a lot of impact because season one, it was good. Ra rather than because season two did a good job of actually building up the themes and whatever that makes this choice mean anything i agree because i don't think there's anything in this choice that is effective because of this season no i i, I feel the same the, way the only thing that's effective about it from this season is that we spent time before they reflected on season one and, and made this decision here i think, I think you know, there, was, there was some distance the bizarre thing about it, the one thing this kind of justifies weirdly and it doesn't justify it in the sense that I enjoyed watching it, but it does kind of justify weirdly that Vanya's plot should have felt separate because if it felt if it wasn't so separate, then them making the choice to go deal with this instead of their own shit wouldn't actually mean anything because if it was like tied into all the plots anyway, the fact that it's a separate thing that's only Vanya's problem, and it isn't really because the kid and because of the, the the commissioners, but, but they, they don't, don't know, know that. that. Yeah, they don't know yeah. that. So because it's such a separate thing thematically to everything else, it actually kind of makes sense so that this decision is more meaningful. So I actually appreciate that. The, 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 the scene where they all get in the car might be the best scene of the whole season because it actually has emotional weight. It has impact. Mm -hmm. I felt things for it. It felt it was heartwarming. And then a lot of the actual fighting afterwards uh, was, was, was solid, I, th I thought. Um, Vis visually decent, if yeah. somewhat contextually lacking sure yes the context is the worst part because the, that's that's kind of missing um but you know so, so while obviously the things that were important this season that do feel like they're relevant in the end of course everything with the handler and lila was very important and you know to be fair that does feel like it pays off a lot of stuff this season um i feel like i should have been like i, I was kind of both like kind of nicely surprised at the reveal that Lila could mimic their powers. It was because it was a genuine oh shit moment because obviously this army of agents from the commission show up, right? Because, you know, Daig was all kind of blah, 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 blah. There's only two of you. You know, it's just it's just Lila and the handler. Uh, and there's, you know, six, seven of us, whatever. Um, <laughs> and she's like, well, let's fix that. And there's literally thousands of agents appear and they're all getting shot at. Um, in fact, one, one, note, one, one, one point on this, like, I guess it makes sense that Diego could, like, you know, manipulate things that aren't just his knives, but it feels weird that we've never seen him do it with anything think, before this point. No, I think that's not true. I think we actually spoke about this in season one, ah. in that his powers were basically Magneto. Right, okay. Because I vaguely, rem like, I'd forgotten as well. Um, But when he did it, I was like, do you know what? I vaguely remember discussing how he was Magneto-esque. Yeah, okay, I mean, it does make sense. It makes sense that it wouldn't just be knives, like because there's nothing specific to knives that make them, you know. Yeah, it's it's kind of it's kind of like Gambit. How Gambit can obviously manipulate energy and a lot of things. He just chooses playing cards to be his main thing because for some reason he thinks playing cards are cool. Yeah, um, Dummy Gambit. 
But it's just so weird in the context of this. Because, I mean, if there was a scene in season one where he literally stopped bullets from hitting himself or someone else, then fair enough. But I don't remember it. So it, it came out here. I was like, wait, why have you not been using this all the time? <laughs> like, well, this is super useful. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it is very useful. Um, but no, the, the big what the shit moment, though, is that Vanya powers up, takes out the entire army like a badass, and is like, okay, all right, cool. And then the old shit moment is that Lila just... Because cause I, cause I was thinking, wait, why have they got a protective bubble around? Why are those two still standing? And I think one of the characters even says the same thing. And then Lila just floats up and does the same thing back. And I'm like, well, that's interesting. And then she takes mm-hmm. on each of the file members one by one and seems to be mimicking their powers. Uh, notably one at a time. It's not like she keeps them all forever. It's just whenever she's around one of them specifically, she can mimic that person's power. Seems to be the case. Yeah. Um, uh, I mean, some more than other, like Alison's, she physically interrupts her. To That's true. Like, steal yeah. her power mid-use, so I wonder if it's only once it's used around her she can. That may steal be. Tr- it. That may be true. Actually, I don't know if there's any example of her using the power before the other person does. And obviously, with the case of Luther, it's just super strength. So I guess he's always, it's always there. It's not. Yeah, but I mean, as soon as he starts hitting her, she yeah. blocks. It's like you know, on impact, she gains the strength yeah. essentially. Uh, so that's a, a fun little. And what I do appreciate about this, um, is that. I think in season one we talked about because I think the, the literally the opening like m- like prologue the, the explanation of the world at the start of season one talked to, I can't remember what the number was but it was something like you know a hundred or maybe a thousand babies were born at the it, same time it was a, like it was a very specific yeah. number. it was like a hundred and fourteen or something yeah. like that because uh, because it's almost like a joke when it says he tried to buy the babies he got seven of them like that, that was like a punchline at the end yeah. of that that little moment uh, so yeah we know there's others out there who were born at the same time and of course they will have powers because they were all part so. You know, Lila turned out to be this, and the little joke where Dave was like, "Well, she's not her biological sister, right?" I mean, no, she's literally not. You were all born at the same time with different parents, so you're fine. <laughs> Don't worry. I know Luther. She, she's she's much less your sister than Luther yeah. and Allison. Yes, who do have a bit of uh, mouth to mouth when Allison can't breathe. Uh, yeah. You know. Also, actually, had quite a good moment. Yeah, it was not. Yeah, it was not a bad moment. Yeah. Again, it was one of these weird things where it didn't even feel like anything in this season really mattered for this moment it was this was all built on their relationship from before yeah that i think that's kind of what makes this episode work in a lot of ways but also makes it in some ways quite bad in that most of this episode doesn't really deliver on anything built from season two itself most obviously there are some bits and Hmm. most of it you know just works because of what we liked in season one and and i feel like as, as much as it, this is a good thing for us, because we like season one and mostly not season two, it feels kind of uh, bad in terms of a writing perspective in that you're not really paying off a lot of the things from this season specifically in your final episode. That makes sense? It does. I'm, I'm kind of conflicted, though, because I, I do think the episode is pretty good. And I, I think... I No, I do as well. The stuff that pays off all, all kind of works really well. Um, the... It, and the actual, you know, visual of all the agents showing up, the, the fight, Lila being this kind of, like, formidable, like, nemesis who can take them all on, like, someone who can actually stand toe-to-toe with all of them, was kind of an interesting thing. I almost wish they revealed it earlier in the season, and we actually spent some time with her being a proper villain before, you know, because obviously she learns the truth in this Pretty episode. Quickly. You know, she learns yeah. the truth about what the handler is. And I, I do, even though, obviously, you know they're going to reverse it somehow, I did think the moment where... The, the, as a family they're convincing her hey you're one of us we'll accept you. we're not going to lie to you like the handler did we're going to actually be there for you and we're a bunch of misfits and we kind of hate each other a lot of the time but we're always kind of there for each other on the end and it's kind of it was kind of a heartwarming scene given all the choices they made for van earlier on and i thought this scene worked quite well and i thought it did a, and honestly the handler is sometimes i think it's a little bit great to me she's kind of one note in a lot of ways in a lot of mm-hmm. her scenes throughout the season i thought her just mowing everyone down with the machine gun in the middle Pretty of the fun. scene was what? Fun. I was going to go with dark, but sure. I mean, honestly, in this show, those things kind of go hand in hand. I suppose in, that's in, true. In a good way. Like, the, the the dark things in this show are played with a tint of irony or tongue-in-cheek uh, you know, when this show does it well. Um, um, I mean, I didn't get funny, but, I mean... I. It, I, it felt dark to me. I actually felt something, even though I knew they were obviously going to have to reverse because they just killed off the entire main cast. Obviously, they're going yeah, to yeah. reverse it. And I kind of, I had remembered this line, you know, the the uh, seconds, not decades, uh, mm. advice that that Hargreaves gave to you know five. I kind of, 
I don't think we actually brought that up when we had that, when yeah, we discussed I, that episode. If, if, I, have a, if I have a complaint about it, is that it felt like such a, I don't know, unemphasized little beat that I, I don't know. Like, I, I didn't even feel the need to talk about it at the time because it didn't feel that important. I remembered like after we recorded, and I went, ah, never mind. Yeah. Like, I, I kind of like I felt okay. It's probably going to come up, and it'll be the the crux at some point. But it was such a standard moment i guess in terms of the advice which is oh yeah okay sure that'll come back up but not in a really notable way if that makes sense again it's just like yeah okay it's the the expected cliche almost it's the end of galaxy quest pretty much it's the end of galaxy quest uh so you know five reverses time he's, he's just alive enough that he tries to jump back and we, we see an actual visual of him running back through time essentially as things are rewinding. rewinds yeah. yeah uh and the speed of course uh is the one who makes this possible because the handler's about to kill five when he's lying there and the swede kills her, kills her out of revenge um and he's let to go he ends up joining the cult that <laughs> klaus was in uh after the end of the episode uh but yeah you know the handler is a basically de- disarmed uh by five and uh, when things rewind and then uh, the swede kills her and it's you know it's it's just a uh, I'm kind of glad that we're done with the handler stuff. I think, even though I like the idea that she was essentially the evil version of of Hargreaves and that she was trying to collect children with powers, right? Because that's essentially what she was trying to take uh, Harlan, right? Because she was kind of there saying, "Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm his new mummy," kind of thing. Like she's clearly trying to build her own little team, like the Umbrella Academy, and that's an interesting idea. That there's a, I mean, as much as Hargreaves is a bit of a dick, right? He's a complete dick. <laughs> well, Ultimately. It, it, our team is the heroes, at least in theory. Well, yeah, but this is what I find interesting is you go, okay, they killed off the handler, and you know, you're you're disappointed by that lack of potential, I guess, that they could have done with that. But like you said, she's kind of a a bit one note grating in, in a lot of her scenes. Oh, no, I, so I'm not, I'm not by dis- the ending, essentially giving us what could very well just be the evil Hargreaves no, version. But I, th- I think you've misunderstood me. I, I wasn't trying to say it was disappointing. Uh, oh, okay. I wasn't trying to say that at all. Uh, I'm, I'm kind of happy she's gone. I, I think I was trying to say that. She, I mean, she got a little bit more interesting here in this last episode, but um, I just I don't actually think the events of the season with her largely were that exciting. And then you know, I look back at some of the other plots this season, and we were saying last week, you know, how are some of these going to feel important uh, by the end? Um, everything with Dave the Soldier. No, nope, we could have axed that. That should have been more uh, Klaus and Ben uh, possession bonding yeah. time um everything with the with the gangster you know uh, which i, I want to just mention you know because we, we've had a, a handful of commenters kind of frequently rem- every time we bring up the guys yeah. go yeah okay it's it's jack ruby's the, the guy's shot you know oswald you know we, you know we know uh it's fine but and because they kept reminding us and, and we weren't mentioning it i thought oh, okay so that's going to play in at some point that's important <laughs> no and it, 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 it it's it's really not. It's it's only important for that vague Kennedy connection for the the basically the payoff to that being a thing is is the scene where you know episodes ago where they all meet up and I think it's Diego being like, look, everything's connected to Kennedy. That's the payoff to to <laughs> to why Luther was working yeah. for him. I, I never, like, I, I never, that's for, it. I never forgot who the gangster was in terms of like you know what he did in history. history. I just yeah. never, I just never remembered his name, so I never bothered trying <laughs> right and it, it just <laughs> but because the, the, people the, kept reminding us i thought it would matter and then it 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 didn't yeah no I, I, this might be shocking to some people but uh these details of certain historical events that happen in the u.s are not taught in uk schools so i the name's uh, not the, firsthand to me taught, taught in english schools uh, Ken, uh jfk uh, the, that whole assassination is done that was it well the, it's uh, the the only the events schools. in in my high school history that I can recall being covered were we did 1066 classic and we did JFK and then we very 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 briefly did the start uh, the, the 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 beginnings of World War one and that is the extent of my three years of history that I can recall and the word crenellations yep uh, I which no one needs to know by the way I did do World War One. I, I did do Rise of the Nazis, World War Two. Did the Cold War, uh, which obviously JFK is mentioned in. But it's... yeah, but not no. We we did like probably like three or four months on just nah. You know, JFK, the, the 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 theories, the 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 conflicting evidence, you know, all that. 
honestly not not the most useful time I've ever spent in a in a classroom. Um, but yeah, I, I wasn't even going to bother mention it to be honest. <laughs> I, I just I did because because people kept you know, reminding us. And I thought, oh, it's gonna come up. It's gonna come up. It's gonna be a thing. That's why they're telling us. And then it it, it, it wasn't. I didn't need to know. But the show basically didn't need me to know it, uh, apart from that one joke of Diego com- being convinced they were all connected to Kennedy. Oh yeah, the assumption is that people are reminding us who the gangster is because that's what makes them relevant. But it doesn't matter. It was never relevant. It was yeah. never relevant to anything that actually happens in the show. It didn't matter. It's it's just a, it's an Easter egg of history, but that's it. It was never actually important. It's yeah. At best, it's a distraction. You know, it's you know, it's just something just to throw out there and go, hey, you know, look at this, and, and make you you know misdirect you onto a certain path. Yeah, uh, you know, Diego Lila's relationship. Uh, it was okay. It was kind of. I, mean, I was never really super invested in it. I, I, yeah, I, I don't quite buy it. Like Lila's side of it, I kind of that because that was established so early in the season. I think by the end, you know, and and her kind of being upset with Diego in the, these last couple of episodes, that kind of made sense. That's Diego though, here suddenly being like, "I love her." I'm like, uh, do you? That said, though, I do think when he's like, because he's the main one making the speech, of course, to her, right? I actually think his speech is very good, and this is what I'm talking about when I said that some of the emotional stuff actually kind of works despite the fact that i don't necessarily think most of the build-up was that great uh yeah i think the scene's well written enough well performed enough that ultimately and then the, the idea that he's talking about family and being there for each other ties into the themes of the show and kind of the, the payoff that we're getting here uh but i'll tell you this right now if season three starts with them all split up i'm going to be pissed i'm going to be actively annoyed at the show because this episode, more than any of them, and we said this halfway through the season when they finally were in a room together, but this this episode, having them all together with a goal, uh, being there for each other, was like, why can't we just have them being on adventures trying to solve things together or fight bad guys together? Like, just give me them together. God damn it. Like, so much of the individual plots this year uh, just were, were either outright boring or just, I don't know, inconsequential. Which is even yeah. worse, almost. Yeah, and and, and it, that's the thing. Like, if if the if, if the stuff with like, you know, I think Dave's a reasonable example here. If mm. the stuff between Klaus and Dave was compelling, even even if it just stood completely on its own and was mm. inconsequential to anything else except to Klaus, if it was good to watch, this wouldn't be a complaint. It's no. because it kind of amounts to nothing. Feels kind of dull while you're watching it. And and doesn't have any overarching significance. That's where the problem kind of kicks in. Yeah, obviously the episode starts with the the original funeral for Ben, and we see that Kid Klaus immediately sort of brings Ben back right after the funeral, and that leads into two things. This episode it leads into Vanya kind of saying, "Oh, he did say that you know, he, you know, you didn't make him stay, so you don't have to feel guilty about that. You know, he he was scared to go, uh, so that gives him a bit of closure." And I wonder, I wonder if that's true, or if Ben was just saying that to kind of let klaus kind of feel better mm. now that he's gone uh, like, like i don't know maybe maybe klaus was keeping him there but and ben had kind of accepted it over the years and now was just like look just let him have this moment you know, you know let him feel better about it or and if it, it was true uh, both i like both options and i was expecting a cliff fire so you know they, they come back yeah you know uh, i i joe joe jo, jo, weird thing they've kind of set up that I, I i really like for some reason is uh diego and was it is it bert uh having this little bromance herb Herb, there you go. And he has, they have this little, you know, bro handshake sort of moment. <laughs> like, what the hell yeah. is this? Um, the, other, the, other one, the other woman there is just like, what is going on here? <laughs> and he's like, yeah, take your pick. Have a suit, grab, grab a, grab a briefcase. You can head on home. Uh, so you know, and it was nice to have Allison, you know, write a letter to Raymond. You know, have a little bit of a, a payoff to that. It makes sense that she's going back. Uh, but they get back to present day, and honestly, it's kind of predictable what the twist was, or not a twist, but what the setup was going to be not exactly i'm not just going to say that i could have exactly predicted what the what they were going to just set up but the, the idea concept that it wasn't quite their timeline anyway. yeah the, the idea that it's back to the future part two that they've come back to present day and oh shit things have changed because we've we've altered things in the history yeah. the, more i think specifically all the interactions with their father probably changed things quite drastically quite likely yeah yeah so one of the things that we said last episode and i still stand by it a little bit but at the same time Clearly, they knew they were going to do this this uh, new timeline version of Ben, who's on the evil, like, what did they call him? It was the, the Sparrow Academy. The Sparrow Academy. So, 
our, our team of six, you know, show up and uh, they're like, hey, you know, we're back. He's like, I knew you'd be back someday. He's like, what are you talking about? We're your children. You're not my child. And obviously, we see we, we don't get to see them. Clearly, they've not cast the rest of the yes, team. Yes, noticeably <laughs> uncast. Yes, they're all uh, on silhouette, except Ben, who's chosen. And he, he's almost got a goatee. This is almost mirror, mirror uh, Star Trek. He's got a scar down his face as well. Yeah. Uh, we're, we're doing dark, you know, dark, uh, you know, tortured Ben, who's going to be... Which, I mean... It makes sense. There's a logic to give them a, a personal thing to hate and want to try and save, even though it's not their Ben. Um, and it's nice to have the actor still around because he's pretty good. Yeah, no, uh, I mean, I think there's a lot of potential to do with this. I still wish we'd had more with him being able to interact with the others through Klaus last season, or this season, rather. Yeah, that, that's, I think, where what it comes down to is, okay, I like that they've kind of got an excuse to have a version, but there was still so much more we could have done with our version first. On the upside, though, I will say that I do like that this ending. I mean, unless they do something at the start of next season, it, you know, it's going to be about fighting her Greaves' new team, and hopefully, it will have nothing to do with uh, the Doomsday or end of the world happening. Because I'll I'll be annoyed if it is. Yeah, I'm okay if it's still like there's time travel and they want to you know mm. fix their timeline, um, not to stop the end of the world, but just so that their family exists. Uh, that's. That's a, a plot I'd be okay with. And I'm happy the commission seems to be able to, it'll just be like a friendly thing they can go for help now. Uh that with you know, with Herb in charge. At least temporarily, yeah. Yeah. Like I, I don't know. I, I, this is one of those things where in season two, like I was kind of ready for the commission to just be like done or or, or be drastically changed anyway. Uh I would say it is. It is now. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I mean. I was but ready it, for it, it to be that way at the start of the season though. <laughs> that that's fair, yeah. yeah. Um but I mean, I'm glad it is. Uh, it wouldn't be, you know, because they're like, oh, we need new board of directors and we need new chairman, you know, because he's acting chairman at the minute. It wouldn't surprise me if maybe the end of next season, if we get uh, one or two of our family go off to be part of that, you know, board of directors, maybe. Yeah, I, I, I don't exactly sure how I would fix this. I mean, I, I obviously I suggested last episode cutting out just chunks of episodes and making it much shorter, but like, I, I almost wonder if the Vanya stuff, it shouldn't have been a plot line all season. We should have had one episode. That's just Vanya's episode doing her story on the farm, and then uh, this, this, that boils back yeah. to what we were saying in episodes one and two: is this show just needs to focus on one or two plots in an episode? Focus in, don't do everything in every episode. No, but I'm saying I'm saying no. One Vanya episode, then we don't see her again until the last two. Like, I, right? I, that, that's all I think we should have seen of her because I feel like that would have even further uh, done the whole separate like where it's her own thing. It's just so disconnected. Until the rest decide to go with her, despite all their own, like you know, that they're, they're on the run because they all think they're everyone thinks they're involved with the JFK assassination. So yeah, th- I I think that would that would hit that home further. It would, it might have worked better being a condensed story that can because if it's well written and well performed, I, I might have been a lot more into the actual romance itself. As it was, it felt so drawn out for time that I was just kind of bored by it by the second time we saw them in an episode. <laughs> like yeah, and it didn't really help. You had the the cliche husband. Yeah, kind of. I don't think the actor was bad. Uh, I don't think it was the best material, but he wasn't, you know, bringing anything new to that role. Yeah, I think there was just better ways to actually convey all the information they need to, and there was definitely a lot of like time spent on stuff we could have just cut out. Like, so. I mean, yeah. I'm still down to watch season three. Uh, obviously, my my expectations going into it now are far more tempered than. It's the sort of thing where if season three happened to drop at a time where there was a lot of other stuff on, we were really busy. I'd be like, eh, do I have to? It would be, it'd be less of a priority for sure. I, I mean, I think the ending is solid, and I think a lot I, of the, I agree. The, the, a lot of this last episode is actually surprisingly good. Um, but it's one of these things where, like, I, you know, I, I, sometimes I wonder if people are like, oh, you're being too negative, you're being too negative. When they get to the end, they'll understand. But. The ending, this episode doesn't retroactively really make anything in the season better. It makes the flaws stand out more because I'm like, well, why couldn't it just be this good the rest of the time then? We, we weren't yeah, achieving it's, anything. It's, it, it's annoying because you can see they're capable of doing good episodes. <laughs> um, materials are stretched out over too much, I think. Uh, so I think that is probably the case. And just a structural thing as well. Rather, uh, in terms of the, the pacing, obviously, as well, but just the structure of how they do episode by episode and the, maybe the season as a whole yeah if i was rating this season it'd be like a six out of ten 
I'd probably give it a five, to be honest. Oh, okay. It's it's okay. It's fine. It, it's it's not bad. Some things I like. Some things are really dislike. I think it evens out for me. That's fair. That's fair. All right, there you go. That is the uh, season finale of the Umbrella Academy. Uh, the boys, obviously, you know, thematically, it's kind of you know got got some crossover with with it. Uh, that's starting back very very soon. Uh, that's going to be weekly on Amazon Prime, although they're dropping three episodes the first week, so I didn't care the Hulu thing, so that'll be a week to yeah. week after that, though. Early buzz for those three episodes has just come out in the last you know day or so, and very positive. Oh, good, good, good. So, uh, and we're covering Lovecraft Country week to week just now from HBO as well, so uh, maybe check out those shows if you haven't. All our reviews for the first uh, season of The Boys are there as well, if you want to like, watch those along with the original season. Uh, otherwise, though, if you want to keep all the content coming, please do like. It's a good, easy and free way to support us. You can also support us financially over at patreon.com slash TV for as little as $1 per month. You can, of course, get us on Twitter at mailed underscore fuzz for channel updates, but otherwise, that is us. So thank you once again for watching or listening. We always appreciate it. Keep watching TV, guys. Have you got any vanilla?